Uh, my name is Yessi. Yessi. And where are you from? I'm um, from Mexico. Okay. I'm Caitlin from the U.S. Okay. What part of the U.S.? New York. Oh, okay. I heard that New York is um, is big and there's a lot of people, even nighttime. Yes, I live in the suburbs, like 30 minutes from the city, so it's quieter. Oh, okay. And Long Island. So it's not as busy. Oh, I see. Yeah. Where do you live in Mexico? Well, I live um, around the area of um, Mexico City. Oh, okay. I think I'm going to Playa del Carmen next month. What is it again? Playa del Carmen. Oh, okay. Okay, yeah, yeah. Playa del Carmen, yeah. Well, I haven't been there, so... Oh, okay. I've been um, more, much of my life in the city, oh. around the city. Yeah, I went to a couple places, but not, not there. Not even uh, Acapulco. Oh, okay. It's near Cancun, I think. Yeah, actually it's near uh, Guerrero. Mm. Yeah, I've never been, so... I hear it's nice. I hear the beaches are nice. Okay, and have you been um, other part of the U.S.? Yes, I've been to a few states. Um, I went to California recently. Oh, okay. that was nice, San Francisco. Oh yeah, I I have seen a couple of pictures of San Francisco. It's really nice over there. Nice. The weather's yeah. a little cold though. Oh. So I like the weather here better in the summer because it's hot. <laughs> and there, it's cold in the summer. On California, like around San Just Francisco. Just San Francisco. The rest oh, of California okay. is hot, but for some reason, I think because San Francisco is in a valley. Oh. Uh, something okay. about that makes it cold. So if it's a valley, it's surrounded by a lot of trees. Yeah, there's there's hills. There's a lot of hills, and there's a bay there. Um, oh, okay. Like it's by the water. So oh, yeah. I'm not sure exactly. Well, the same thing here in Mexico. We have a lot of hills and mountains, so mm -hmm. um, the weather is in the mornings is really cold. In the afternoon is hot. In the uh, evening is super cold. <laughs> so we have the three seasons. Yeah, so you yeah. have everything. That's good. Uh -huh. I like seasons. Yeah. I so like wait. the snow. I want to... One day, one day I'll, I'll go to the oh, U.S. Oh, for the snow? Just for the snow. <laughs> Just the <laughs> snow. <laughs> yeah, in New York we have a lot of different weathers. We get hurricanes, snowstorms, everything. Oh my Hi, Christoph. Hello, how are you today? Good, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. All right, now that you're here, you can get started. We're talking about unsolved mysteries of science and models of deduction. So to start out, can you tell us about a mystery in your life and what do you think happened? And I'm not sure if you know each other, but can you also say your name and where you're from? Okay. My um, name is Jesse. Yes. Okay. My name is Jesse, and I'm from Mexico City. Okay. And uh, well, I, I don't know a mystery. Well, there's a lot of uh, where I live. Uh, I usually like around. 12 p.m. Uh, we can see because not it's not only me. Other people can see uh, like fireballs on the sky. <laughs> wow! And we don't know what it is. We think it's a UFO, but it could be you no know, different things. No. 
So I, at night, right? Yes. I think that's 12 a.m. Yes, 12 a.m. Yeah. You're right. Confusing. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. That mistake. So you see fireballs. Is it yeah. every night or sometimes? No, it's, it's usually um, when here the winter is coming, but we don't have usually a winter. It's getting, when it's winter time, it gets uh, more, a little bit colder. Okay. And that's when there's a lot of going on. Interesting. During night time. I know tonight there's a meteor shower. Oh. And I know you can see it from New York. I'm not sure if you can see it from there. But it could be uh, meteors. Yeah, uh, that's true. But uh, we we like to, uh, uh, to think that it's something else. Yeah. <laughs> it makes it Are more interesting. <laughs> but, I mean, yeah, it could be that too. Yeah, but I think meteor showers don't happen that often. So if you see it often, then maybe it is something else. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Christoph, how about you? Hello, my name is Christoph. I am from Silesia in Poland. And some uh, stories in my country. <laughs> uh, we had some hill, and you uh, stop the car, and uh, and uh, you give your gear into loose. Uh, your car is going up to hill. And uh, science said that uh, under uh, the street is some stream, under underground stream, and uh, that make this car uh, go uh, uphill. So even if your car is stopped, it goes uphill. You're saying? Uh, yes, but you put uh, gear on loose uh, on the neutral. Oh, on neutral. So if you're on neutral, your car will go uphill by itself. Yes. Wow, and that's near your house? No, no, it's uh, some place in my country. I oh, haven't wow. been there. You haven't been there. I, but I have seen some uh, footage from this place. Wow, that's interesting. Do you know where it is? What it's what the city is or uh, I do not remember. <laughs> Uh, it was uh, uh, maybe five years ago. I have seen that. <laughs> it's only a mystery I remember. <laughs> wow. Well, I'll say one, I guess. I'm Caitlin from the US, New York. And a few summers ago, I was in New York. It's a very hot day. I was driving my car and like blocks of ice started falling on the car oh. and everyone stopped their cars in the middle of the street and we get out and there's just like blocks, big blocks of ice falling from the sky. But it wasn't cold, it was hot. So it was like a hailstorm, but it was only one area, like it wasn't all over the city. And... It's just strange that in the summer, ice would fall from the sky. And it wasn't even small. They were, like, huge. Like, they could break a window. So I still don't know what happened. Oh, my God. <laughs> I tried to look it up, uh, but I couldn't find anything. So I guess I'll never know. Yeah, that's a mystery. Yeah. That's weird. <laughs> Okay. So today we're talking about modals of deduction and to start with pronunciation. Sometimes when you want to emphasize something in a sentence, you say it in a different tone, like maybe a higher tone. So see if you can identify my tone in this sentence. No, I don't like tea. I like coffee. Can you see where what I'm trying to emphasize? I'll mm. say it again. No, I don't like tea. I like coffee. Uh, you 
synthesize coffee. Exactly. So I'm trying to emphasize coffee because that's what I like. And I'm comparing it to something I don't like. So I'll say it in a higher tone than the thing I don't like. Or Pedro can't swim, but Carlos can. Mm. Can you tell Yessi? Well, you, you're comparing that Pedro cannot swim? Yeah, so... Pedro can't swim, but Carlos oh. can. Oh, so Carlos can swim, but Pedro cannot swim. Oh. Yeah. So I emphasize Carlos, mm -hmm. because he's okay. the one that can swim. All right, try... This one, you want to emphasize the favorite color, which is blue, right? So how would you say that, Christoph? Um, <clears throat> uh, her favorite color isn't orange, it's blue. Exactly. <laughs> or... Can give you one, yes. About that one, yes. Okay. Um, no, I don't like bacon. I like ham. Good. So you emphasize ham. Hi, Liliana. Hello. Hello. Can you hear me now? Yes, uh, hi. Very quiet. Yeah, the microphone, your microphone's low. Uh, now? Much better. Little better. Something happened to my microphone, so now it's better? No. Still hard to hear you. All right, well, we're talking about modals of deduction. Um, I don't think we'll be able to hear your answer if I ask you the question. Let's see. All right, we'll move on. Okay, so modals of deduction tell us how likely it seems that something happened. For example, if you wake up and the streets are wet, you can say, it must have rained last night. The four most common modals of deduction are must, may, or might, and could. And here are the percentages. So you use must when you're like 95% sure. You use may or might when you're 50% sure and could when it's 25% or less. And these are just estimates, obviously. So, I got three phone calls from a new phone number. It must be my mother. She got a new cell phone. So, you use must here because they know that their mother got a new cell phone, so they must have a new number. And the mother called three times, so who else would call three times? It must be my mother. I think Jenny might like me. She might have been the one who sent me the note. So it's about 50%. She might like me, she might not. She might have sent me the note, she might not have. They don't really know for sure. Did not study at all for the test. 
he could have passed, but probably did not. So this one's only 25% because we don't know if he would have passed if he studied. Second, there are a few ways to form sentences with modals of deduction. You can form sentences to identify the situation. The construction would be subject plus modal plus B plus N. So that car might be the new Toyota sports car. So that car is a subject. The modal is might. You add B and then the noun the Toyota sports car. Or this song could be the new Coldplay. To form sentences when judging the situation, so the construction is subject plus modal plus B plus opinion. So, you work for the government? That must be boring. Giving an opinion that it must be boring. Or, the boss wants to talk to you? That could be bad. When you're talking about past events, you form it subject plus modal plus have plus past participle. past events. So the house burned down, someone could have left a candle burning. Or John isn't here, he may have stayed home today. Third, you can form negative statements with can't and couldn't. So this car looks cheap, it can't be the new BMW. Or, who left a candle burning? It could have been Tony because he hates candles. It couldn't have been Tony because he hates candles. Sorry. So that's how you make it. Do you have any questions? Nope. Okay. Can you hear me? All right, let's see. Liliana, is your microphone working now? Can you hear me now? No? Still very low. I can kind of hear you, though. So let me ask you now? the, uh, the warm-up question. Okay. Sorry, but I have uh, some audio problems today. Maybe it's my connection is so slow. It's fine. It's getting better, actually. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. No, okay. uh, I have a, a, when you use could have plus past participle, it's something that you you could do it in the past, but you never do it? Or an action that never happens, happened in the past? Um, well, you're making a statement about what happened in the past. Mm -hmm. Someone could have left a candle burning, for example, in your example. Exactly, house. because the house burned down in the past, and then you're making a deduction about what could have happened in the past. Mm -hmm. So candle. someone could have left a candle burning. Uh, okay, thank you. Yeah, as opposed to the one before that, you work for the government, that must be boring because they're presently working for the government and you're talking about something that's happening now. Okay. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. You. So, can you just tell us your name again and where you're from? And then the question is, can you tell us about a mystery in your life and what do you think happened? Uh, a mystery? In my life? Yes. Like a mystery either that happened in your own life or something that you heard about 
Um, mm -hmm. Yessi was saying that sometimes she sees like bursts of light in the sky uh -huh. and some people think it's a UFO or we were saying maybe they're meteors. Uh -huh. Okay, uh, my name is Liliana. I'm from Colombia, South America. Um, what else? I studied uh, interior design um, about a mystery. I think um, I I dream uh, of a cousin who died uh, one year ago, and she told me uh, in in a dream that um, she's okay now and um, she. Um, She's not. She's uh, in calm, and um, we talk. We we talk a lot uh, in the dream. So I think maybe she could uh, have uh, have wanted to send me a mass a message or something like that, because it's strange because uh, I've never um, dreamed uh, of her since uh, she died. Interesting. I've heard that's kind of common for people to have dreams like that. Where you mm. feel like you're communicating. Yeah, it's interesting. So I, I try to to understand uh, what what she's trying to say me because I I didn't remember their uh, words. But I anyway I dreamed. Uh, mm -hmm. of her. Mm. So you don't remember her exact words, but right, all, only that she's uh, in calm and. She, she's happy there. That's all that I remember about the dream. Oh, well, that seems like a good dream. <laughs> and I, I read, uh, can I ask you something? Yes. Because I read on uh, your background, your background, that um, you are an ethnic of Colombian and Irish. <laughs> tell me about it. I was, I was going to tell you, my mother was born in Colombia. Hey, great. And her family. I'm actually going, I think, in January. Yes. Oh. But uh, it's the first time that you... I okay. went two years ago. I stayed for two weeks. And now I'm going for the second time. Oh, nice. <laughs> nice. Glad to hear that. <laughs> where are you from in Colombia? Bogota. Uh, okay. Yeah, Bogota that's where my family lives, too. Yeah. Oh, cool. Mm. <laughs> Should be nice. Yes. Okay. All right, so let's get into the article. Here's the link. Okay. 10 Unsolved Mysteries of Science. List versers love mysteries, but while it seems that we have already covered tons of them, there are always more out there to discover. This time around, we have focused on the mysteries of science that have baffled researchers and left them wondering if current science is unable to grasp them, or even if perhaps there is a higher power at play. Below are 10 scientific mysteries that will provoke thought and leave you wanting for the solution. Perhaps someone among us will one day solve some of these mysteries and become a famous scientist renowned for their discovery. For the time being, however, the solution to these equations has not yet been definitively proven or understood. Okay, so we'll go through a few of them. Number 10, continental drift. The theory of continental drift was first proposed in 1500 and stated that continents seemed to drift relative to each other across the ocean. Later on, it was refined into the theory of plate tectonics, which proposes that there are tectonic plates on the ocean floor that slowly move, separating the continents and creating the oceans over the time period of millions of years. The mystery, however, is what actually caused these plates to move in the first place and has been further confounded by studies that have shown it is unlikely that the theory actually fully explains the phenomenon. 
Some have suggested that due to the unexplained nature of the workings behind the theory and evidence against it, that the continents may have actually been separated much more quickly than many millions of years by a catastrophic event such as a flood. Number nine, extin extinction of megafauna. There were once many other large animals like the elephant that walked the earth, such as the woolly mammoth. These were called megafauna. The megafauna, for the most part, disappeared only recently, in the range of tens of thousands of years ago, and scientists have been unable to truly ascertain why. Two main answers have been suggested as the cause, overhunting by man and climate change. Those who say it is climate change often have very little evidence besides claiming that there isn't enough evidence for the other explanation. As for the overhunting explanations, many scientists say that even if it were true, there may be very little archaeological evidence for it. The mystery still remains unsolved, and it may never be conclusively understood. There could even be something else entirely at play. I'm going to skip down this one. Birds falling from the sky. Can you see it? In Arkansas about a year ago, a bunch of blackbirds fell from the sky. At the time, fireworks were blamed, though this theory was not incredibly well tested. It happened again not that long after, and this time they weren't, sh weren't sure enough to blame fireworks. To make matters even stranger, in the same state around the same time, thousands of fish mysteriously turned up dead. While a variety of explanations have been given, it's hard to explain why thousands of birds would fall from the sky and thousands of fish would suddenly die in the same area around the same time. It could just be a coincidence, but it's certainly a very odd one. I'm just curious, do you guys see the article? Because yes, for sure. me it shows me my face. Yes. Okay. Oh, there you go. All right. Okay, scientists were attempting to study early stars, but in 2000, oh sorry, space roar. Scientists were attempting to study early stars, but in 2006 they ran into a problem. They were faced with a mysterious noise that greatly inhibited their study. Scientists are left baffled as to what causes this. While sounds cannot travel through space, radio waves can, which is what they believe it is. However, they are baffled as to where or what the radio waves are coming from. Also of note is that this sound is six times louder than should be expected, and there is no explanation for that either. Scientists have managed to figure out that it is not any radio waves that they currently know of, or any of the early stars themselves, or any of our dust particles. You can hear what it sounds like. the sound from Jupiter. Mm -hmm. Miranda. Moon illusion. The moon illusion has existed since ancient times, back in the days of Aristotle and the ancient Greeks and Chinese. The illusion is that the moon seems to appear much larger lower in the sky than it is higher in the sky. In the past, people have suggested things such as an atmospheric effect or something physical, but these have been debunked. Others have suggested such things as relative size or apparent distance as explanations for this illusion. Yet this still baffles scientists. So far, no one, even with modern science, has been able to, to definitely explain this mysterious phenomenon.
the origin of life. The origin of life and the creation of our universe has been the subject of incredible debate and study since recorded history. Some scientists explain the creation of the universe by the model of the Big Bang, which most of us learned in school. Much study has also been done on the subject of abiogenesis, which is the ability of life to come from matter that is inorganic. The only way for life to be created without prior life. Despite an incredible amount of scientific study, none of this has thus far been proven. Although scientists at the Large Hadron Collider Project are working on discovering the Higgs boson, which many believe would bring physicists closer to proving the Big Bang and other parts of the universe's origin theories. However, it is important to note that discovering the Higgs boson is not the be-all and end-all. It would open up new ground in the study of physics, but it would not definitely prove the Big Bang. Furthermore, many who believe in the theory of intelligent creation would say that even if the Big Bang were to be proven, it does not necessarily mean that a god of some sort is not involved. A god could have created the universe and set it in motion through means that could be observed by science. Those who propose this theory bring up Thomas Aquinas' famous argument in regards to an unmoved mover that there had to be some first cause to the events that created the universe. The universe is huge and expansive and the origins of life may never be fully understood. Okay, does anyone have any questions? Vocabulary? Anything you didn't understand? No? So first question, can you explain Yassi? Okay. Uh, like what so, do scientists think? Okay, so the theory that they're talking about is that um, they don't have the exact idea where, what, uh, or or who is making um, the noises. Mm-hmm. If it's uh, it's not a, it's not a, um, made by the by the humans, I guess, the Earth. Okay. And um, well, first they thought that it was uh, radio waves, right? coming from probably Earth, but uh, then I guess they did more research and they not, they now know that it's coming from a different, um, uh, a different place. Yes, exactly. Good. So next one. Why do you think megafauna are extinct, Liliana? You can go up. Liliana? Yes, I'm here. Can you hear me? <laughs> OK. Uh, okay, let me check the article again. Uh, they say that uh, some species uh, uh, were disappeared, um, but um, they, they say that uh, it's because of the um, because the the climate uh, had 
had been changed 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 through the years. Mm -hmm. and, um, what else? And uh, this one cows and other cows uh, people hunted a lot of uh, species in the past, and. Um, Good. So megafauna could be extinct because of climate change or overhunting by man. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, um, I'm wondering that uh, there, uh, there are still some uh, uh, mythological or uh, creatures like, for example, cocodriles. Or, uh, they say that they are all the, the most uh, the most ancient uh, mm -hmm. creatures uh, in the world, and uh, they they can uh, survive through the years. So that's weird for me. Yeah. So I guess the crocodiles could be an example of megafauna that isn't extinct. Mm -hmm. But so you're wondering why they're still around, but not yeah. the other ones. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, that's true. Because we do still have whales. Maybe not every type of whale, but they're definitely large. And then it's showing the elephant. Mm -hmm. So it is interesting why some would be extinct, but not others. Mm -hmm. Yes. OK. Okay, Christoph, why do you think birds fell from the sky in Arkansas? Mm. It's a big mystery. <laughs> uh, uh, scientists thought at first that uh, they can blame a fireworks, but uh, that uh, Turn out was not true. Um, and uh, <laughs> the second one that was that uh, fish in the same time uh, uh, was dead too. So <laughs> this is a completely uh, mystery. Um, can I don't know? Can be some natural uh, effect, maybe uh, kind of electricity, <laughs> uh, uh, induced by uh, sun. Sunwind can came to <laughs> uh, Earth and then to kill the uh, bird. Interesting. So it could have been some electricity force that killed them. Yes. Possible, like from space or something, from the atmosphere. Yes, could be some explosion on the sun and. Uh, uh, sun, wind can came to uh, uh, Earth mm -hmm. surface and uh, induce some uh, electricity and uh, could uh, paralyze this. Interesting. But it's <laughs> only <laughs> good. <laughs> Valid theory. <laughs> yes, it's my <laughs> stupid <laughs> theory. <laughs> All right, next one. What are the origin of life theories? So there's two main theories for the origin of life. Um, Yesi. Um, 
Okay. Wait, well, they talk about the Big Ben. Mm hmm. And, um, uh, hmm. Okay, okay. And, um, okay. They mostly talked about the Big Bang Theory, but then they mention, like, a god that maybe a god started the process, and then the Big Bang Theory took over. Oh, yeah, I see. So, like, depends if you're Christian, if you believe that God created life, or if it's more of scientific or a mix of both. Okay, yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, they do talk about the big man and the and the god, god the religious um, theory, right? That God created all uh, the universe. Mm -hmm. And like you said, it, it could be both, mm -hmm. right? Um, and um, well, I think it might be. Uh, more than likely the Big Bang theory. Mm -hmm. Because, well, religious is more a belief thing. And so, yeah. Yeah, so you, you like when science can prove things. Yes. <laughs> Sheldon Cooper. Is that, who's, wait, I'm not sure who that is. <laughs> uh, have you seen this TV series, The Big Bang Theory? Oh, okay. Yeah, you're right. There's a TV show. <laughs> I've only watched maybe two episodes. <laughs> I, I know it's very popular, though. So you think he'll solve it? <laughs> <laughs> yes, and the main character of The Big Bang Theory is Sheldon Cooper. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, last one. Come back here. How would a scientist solve a mystery? Liliana. Uh, what do you what, what, what scientists solve a mystery? Yeah, like how would they solve it? What do they have to do to be able to solve a mystery? Uh. <laughs> Uh, they they were based uh, tourists uh, in some uh, I think um, real uh, cases, but um, anyway I think it's uh, for uh, I think for them it's hard because um, sometimes there are no explanation for every mystery uh, that happens. Mm -hmm. Uh, in the world or in life, so mm, maybe uh, they say that um, it it uh, the how can I say that uh, some um, some events in nature happens like for example earthquakes or um, a tsunami or uh, I I always heard that earthquakes for example. Uh, and it happens when the the climate uh, changes. it when for example uh, they change it to to cold uh, from cold to hot because mm -hmm. the, the the platonics uh, uh, caves uh, uh, they are moving uh, uh, below the uh, below the earth and they try to separate so it causes uh, earthquake or uh, tsunamis mm -hmm. I think it's, it's hard not to explain. Uh, uh, so scientists... Uh, how to predict that it could happen. Yes, yeah, so they have to predict and study, find proof. Mm. Yeah. Study the Earth. Yeah. Mm. 
Christoph, can you add anything to that? How do you think Sheldon Cooper would uh, solve that <laughs> mystery? <laughs> he, he flex his uh, uh, mind <laughs> and uh, then resolve it. And, but uh, seriously, uh, um, scientists uh, have to follow the protocol, so they should uh, make theory and try uh, to um, prove this theory, mm -hmm. um, like uh, making some experiments uh, and uh, if this experiment uh, give results, they can learn from this and uh, in this way uh, can uh, solve uh, the mystery. Yes, exactly. All right, let's review. Okay, I'm going to give a statement and then you make a modal of deduction. So, you see, or sorry, a woman walks down the street and everyone is taking pictures of her. Yesi, what do you think is happening? So, a woman walks down the street and everyone is taking pictures of her. Uh, okay. Mm. Okay, okay. Can I say more, most than likely? Uh, yes. Most than likely. I don't know. I better say it. Um, she could be a artist. An artist. Mhm. Mm so she could be an artist. That's, yeah. that's true. Liliana, what do you think? Um, maybe um, she might uh, be a, um, polit uh, a leader, a politician leader. She might be a political leader. Good. All right. You see a new, fast, red sports car. What do you think, Christoph? Mm, it must be produced by Germans. <laughs> <laughs> must be produced by Germans. <laughs> Yessi, what do you think? Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. Oh, it might be a sport. Oh, no, it might be a uh, American car. Okay, might be an American car. Mm, I don't think so. <laughs> it could be a, a an Audi. <laughs> Christoph is ninety-five percent certain that it is a German car. <laughs> So he wouldn't agree. <laughs> All right. If I said I work for Kalingo, how would you make a judgment using modals of deduction, Liliana? You must have uh, an excellent uh, background. Kind of. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, well, you yeah, you must be uh, a good teacher. Thank you. <laughs> what would you say, Christoph? Uh, you definitely must finish a course uh, uh, for le learning for, for foreigners. Uh, for teaching foreigners? Yes, teaching for foreigners. 
can I say uh, you uh, you must be uh, yes you must have uh, been trained by Colingo uh, owners. Yes, that is true. And for Christoph, uh, you wouldn't say must definitely. You'd say either, like one or the other. So you um, definitely my. have completed training, or you must have completed training. You could use either one, but not together. Um, Okay. So now can you use a negative modal of deduction? So man hits a police car with his car. Yes, see. A man hits a police car with his car. Um, so he must be drunk. <laughs> And can you try a negative, like uh, with not? Instead like, of uh, using must? Yeah, so for, for no. example, you could say he must not have been sober. sober. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Something like that. Oh, or um, I'll give you a different one. But must not is... You cannot say must not. Yeah, you can say must not or mustn't. He mustn't have been sober or he couldn't have been sober. Mm -hmm. okay. Which is basically saying he, he must, must have been drunk. Okay. So you're saying it negative instead of positive. Okay. So... A man walks down the street and everyone is excited to see him. Liliana, can you think of a negative model? Um, uh, but uh, anybody uh, yeah. has uh, okay, uh, like uh, anybody has hasn't uh, taken photos. Of him, uh, uh, no, sorry, hasn't um, that anybody have hasn't hasn't taken taken hasn't taken Take. photos of him? Okay, for this one we could use like can't or couldn't, uh, like couldn't. maybe think of someone that people wouldn't be excited to see. Mm -hmm. So, like, uh, example I have is, like, Donald Trump. Some people don't like Donald Trump, so it can't be Donald Trump mm -hmm. because, like, no one would be excited to see him. And uh, if I say, uh, for example, I, I haven't, because I, I would like to, to use the, um, the past model. I haven't uh, got his autographer. Uh, uh, I haven't gotten his uh, like his signature, his uh -huh. autograph, autograph. Autograph. Uh -huh. Good. Yeah, you can say that. Um, but for modals of deduction, you're more uh, trying to like talk about certainty. Mm -hmm. So we used like must, may, might could. Uh, okay, I may not. So like must have or uh, it couldn't have been. So like it couldn't have been so and so. So you're more talking about certainty, um, not really talking about like the, the situation, uh, but more uh, the uh, certainty. Uh, he couldn't, uh, he, he couldn't be, no, he must uh, he may, might not. He might not uh, be um, a famous uh, people or a celebrity. Okay. Uh, yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Something like that. Good. All right. Does anyone have any questions? Uh, 
think it's, it's no. good to, to use the, uh, the past models because I have some problems with past model. Half have uh, been or half has plus participle. Yes, let me um, give you the examples I have here. Um, that last message I sent, that's how you form uh, uh, the negative statements. Mm -hmm. right, and then you said past? Yes, past models. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, oh, here, here. Because I understand the, the models uh, in a simple way, but past models, I have some problems using them. Yeah, so past models is just when you're talking about something that happened in the past, mm -hmm. and then you put it in, like, the past tense. Mm -hmm. So uh, he may have stayed home. All right, sorry. Uh, they have stayed home today. John isn't here. Yeah, you know what? That one is confusing because it seems like it's talking about the present, right? John isn't here. Mm -hmm. He may have stayed home today. Mm -hmm. I feel like that isn't a good example. <laughs> that's confusing, right? Yeah, yeah that's what I <laughs> what I have in my notes, but uh, I wouldn't use that one. No. Maybe it would. It should be like John wasn't here yesterday. Mm -hmm. He may have stayed home yesterday, right? Mm -hmm. But if you say today, it d it's not the past. Yes. So, yeah, ignore yeah. that one. Okay. We'll if you change forward. it to yesterday, mm -hmm. and that would be the past. Yes, it's, it's easier. To yeah. <laughs> I'll make a note for them to uh, check that example because it doesn't okay. seem right. Okay, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, thanks for coming. And uh, class went well. I have one more class today, so maybe I'll see you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right, bye. Okay, bye. Bye. bye.